All right, let's have a discussion on variable annuities, shall we? Um, look, I've sold variable annuities in my past, and I'm not 100% anti-variable annuity, but I'm going to share with you, I just got off a phone call with some good folks uh, in the middle part of this country, and they share with me uh, their annuity contract info, and uh, let's go into this. Now, it's, uh, it's easy to disparage the guy who sold them, these things. It's easy to disparage these people for the ignorance of how it works. It's easy to do all that. Hindsight, my friends, is always 2020. Always 2020. Just it's so easy to say, how could you have done that? And and looking back on now what we know, whereas before we did not know. So let me let me back up a little bit and share with you why someone would be uh, could fall for the uh, the aura of a variable annuity because it's easy to forget how worrisome it was in 2010. All right, so remember, from October 2007 to March 9th of 2009, the S&P 500 fell 55%. Now, here's a brief quiz. What got us out of that? Remember, March 9th was the bottom. What stopped that? It was Barney Frank bringing a congressional committee hearing to talk about getting rid of Mark to market accounting. That literally, it's not a coincidence. That really coincided with the beginning of the bear, the bull market we're in even to this day. However, back in 2010, your old buddy, uh, yeah, 2009, even your old buddy Josh had a little bit of bonds because like Obama just took over. He had the most radical, I mean, Obama was a friend of Bill Ayers, man. Don't forget that. This isn't just some run-of-the-mill Joe Biden-ish type of Democrat. He was he was a radical, right? And it was scary for those of us who are saying, whoa, we didn't, you know, this isn't just John Kerry. This is a radical who's friends with Bill Ayers. Uh, that was kind of scary. So it's easy to see that the it looked bad. It did. Turned out Obama was a corporatist just like all the other guys, but at the end of the day, to include George Bush, at the end of the day, though, we didn't know that back then. So it's easy to say today you should have just been in stocks and, and ran with it. But back then, if this is your life savings and you're just about ready to retire, it's hard. And you, so you go into an office of a guy and he says, look, I have this variable annuity contract. It will guarantee you a step-up basis of 6% a year, which you can take interest off, uh, income off for the rest of you and your spouse's wife. Now, I'll go into all this here in just a second. Uh, there's no risk of loss, uh, essentially. I mean, the, I mean, whatever the contract was, it doesn't matter. I mean, at the end of the day, you're sitting there saying there's no risk of loss because if you die, at least you know your spouse will get in everything you put into this so you won't be down 55%. And you're guaranteed a certain amount of income with a step up of 6% a year. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't understand what the step up means. We're going to go all of that here today. But that's the way it was in 2010. You can easily see someone says, this is my pot of money I've saved. I've worked 35 years as a small business owner. I just sold my business. I cannot go back to work. I'm 60 years old. I don't have the time or the energy to regenerate this. I just got to make sure I'm protected. All right. So I don't want to disparage people who sold people products that made them go to bed at night, allowed them to sleep. And I don't want to disparage people who bought products that allowed them to sleep at night. There's inherently nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. But I do want to go into the depths of how these things work because it's important. All right. So here we got Bob and Jane. All right. Bob is, uh, Jane worked for Bob for a little bit. Bob is a self-employed businessman for 35 years, ran a business, made pretty good money. Uh, House is paid off, or I just freaking typical salt of the earth Americans, without question. Bob is 67 now, Jane's 66. All right, so Bob took an annuity. We'll start with this one, actually. I put annuity two. He bought this in 2010, all right, for, and he put $218,000 in it. He bought this annuity in 2010 and put 218000 bucks in it. He came back, uh, then his wife the same day bought uh, her own annuity, put 118000 in it in 2010. All right, so 2010, they bought these two annuities, put 118000 in it and 218000 in it. All right, now this contract said, and I, I've seen, I know exactly how this works, so I want to, to, to tell you how these work. These are two different numbers you'll see here. This is how much he put in. That is his current value as of today in 2019. Now today, if you're watching this, because this will be part of my uh, uh, my course, it'll be uh, September 10th, I think 2000. Is it yeah, September 10th, 2019? 
Contract value probably at the end of June, the second quarter, is three hundred seventy-seven thousand bucks. He put two hundred eighteen thousand there. It's worth three hundred seventy-seven thousand dollars. It's basically a five and a half percent rate of return. Nothing, not not too shabby, not too shabby at all. I mean, without question. Again, hindsight is twenty twenty. But he also has an income base he can take off, and we'll see how much that is. A five sixty-one. So I want to explain how this works. What happens is, is the annuity company will say, we will guarantee you an income base. Actually, what's that rate of return was, oh, hold on a second, now I'm getting confused. The rate of return here, 218,000 he put in is our present value, 377,000 is a future value. Yeah, 5.6 here. So he got a 5.6 rate of return there, but on 561, he got, uh, oops, oops. Yeah, 9.9% .9 there. So he has an income base with a step up of 9.9% a year. So what's happening is they're saying, we are going to guarantee you a certain amount of income each and every year that you A, can't outlive and that will grow for you. So that sounds pretty good. So Bob said, like, yeah, that sounds pretty good. All right, so we're gonna say, you will guarantee you in 10 years. So he puts this in in 2010, in 2020, we're going to guarantee you $31,000 a year of income, which you and Jane can't outlive. I think. I didn't see the full contract, but that's what they said to me. And I watched this email stream going back and forth between Bob and the insurance guy. And uh, anyway, that's what they said. So I'm going to go with it. I was a little bit uh, skeptical because the insurance guy wasn't providing the correct information. And I, I'm not sure what's going on there, but I was like, ugh. Anyway, so 561. So that's a 9.9% income step up. But this is not walk away money, my friends. Bob cannot go to his insurance company and says, give me a check for 561. They won't do that. They'll say, we'll give you a check for 377. But to access this 561, you've got to take it as an annuity stream, an income stream. I hope that makes sense. This is walk away money. That's income money, which you get as a, a new as you get as an annuity. I probably should put that thirty-one thousand over here, actually. All right. So these go hand in hand. This is walk away money. So if he wants to cancel the account, which he's going to, he's going to get a check for whatever the market value is, but roughly three hundred seventy-seven thousand bucks. But he could take $31,000 a year of income, which sounds like not too bad. So we'll take $31,000 a year of income, divide that by 561, and that's a 5.5% payout ratio. 5.5%, let's get a different color here. You see that? Yeah, payout. So while the income base grew at 10% a year, now he's got 561,000 of an income base. He can take 5.5% of that a year, guaranteed, which is actually pretty good. It's pretty good. I'm, I don't have any qualms with that at all. But if he wants to walk away money, he only gets 5.6% is what his annual return is there. So if he wants a check, he'll say, man, I only made 5.6% a year. I could have done so much better. Uh, send me a check, they'll send him a check for th uh, 377000 bucks. Or you can say, well, forget that. Why don't you just take it as $31,000 a year of income, and that will give you a 5.5% payout rate on this uh, $561,000. bucks. But here's a problem. That's not how a lot of these insurance guys will pitch that. They're going to say, on a contract value of $377,000, that's about a 9% payout rate. But you, it's not a 9% payout rate. It's not 31,000 on 377. It's actually 31,000 on 561. That's where they get you. They confuse you because they don't tell you the difference between the walk away money and the income money. Two completely separate things. So I want to show you. See what this number is right here? If he would have put this 218,000 into the Wellington Fund, it'd be worth that today. $913,000. At the end of 2000, uh, at the at, at the end of Friday of two, uh, September 2019, if he would have put 218,000 in the Wellington Fund, which is 6535 stocks to bonds, it'd be worth 913,000 dollars today. All right. So if he were to take five percent on 913,000, how much would that be? 913. 
times 0 0.05, that'd be $45,000 a year in income if you were to take it off of this instead. So let's write that down. It's $45,000 a year at 5%. Now, it's not guaranteed. I get that. So there is some risk. And the well, uh, last year was down like 3% or something like that. But that's how this works. So he has an annuity. He put 218000 If he would have put in Wellington, it would be worth 900000 Instead, he put it into this annuity contract. So now it's worth uh, 377000 which is basically a third of that contract of the, uh, what it would have been if he had Wellington. So if he walks, he made 5.6% in one of the biggest bear bull markets we've ever had. And that's not bad, but that's not getting the job done relative to what it would have done in Wellington. On top of that, he can take $31,000 a year of income for the rest of life, rest of his life. That will never grow. I mean, theoretically, it could if the markets continue well, but it most likely won't. And I'm not sure if there's a, uh, a limit on how much it could go down. I don't know. Presumably, that will never drop either. And a 5.5% payout rate, though, my friends, isn't that good for a 67-year-old guy. It's okay, but it's not that good. But the reason why he didn't make nearly this amount of money is because he's paying about 4% a year in fees. So this contract, the cost, the account value, 377, is costing him four, it's actually $3,777 uh, a year. It's caught, well, no, it's costing him uh, uh, about $4,000 a year. And that's just on the management fees. There's other fees that go with it as well. The contract's incredibly expensive. There's just no getting around that. And, I mean, that's just, it's costing $4,000 a year just for the investments on top of all the other income streams. This probably costs them about nine, dollars $10,000 a year for this thing. And when you're paying that kind of fees, there's no way you're going to make money, none. So you got to understand when you're dealing with an annuity contract, you got to say to yourself, what's the walk away money? The walk away money, how a check today? What's the income money? You've got to know there's income benefit and there's walk away money. You've got to know how that works. The income benefit is not what money is what your cash value is, how much it's worth to you today. What you could do with that money to go buy a new car, to go buy a new house, to go give it to your kids, that's walk away money. Income money is different. You only get thirty-one thousand a year. That's pretty good for the rest of your life. It's not. It's but it's really not that good because he could take this money here if he would have done it in Wellington and bought a single premium income annuity and done much better, much better. Again, hindsight's twenty twenty. But just you got to know the difference between walk away money and income benefit. Now the funny thing is he doesn't need this money. He's he got no debt. He's got Social Security. He's got some farmland. He's got some income on. His wife's got Social Security. He's got another annuity that's paying him $3,000 a month. He doesn't need it. So this right here is a non-starter right out the gate, this uh, annuity, because he does not need the income. He doesn't need it. So it doesn't do him any good. So what he's doing is going to move to Vanguard, which is the way to go. All right, but even worse, let's go to annuity number one, number two here. So even worse, he put this into a, a, a variable annuity in 2012. He put $185,000 in there, and now it's worth $221,000. I just, ay, ay, ay. And so if we take our trusty calculator, he put $185,000 and did it seven years ago. No payment, it's worth uh, $221,000 now. So he's made all 2.5% on that guy. That's not getting the job done. Now, again, two different account values. You want to take a guess what's what? That's walk away money. That's how much you can get if you took a check today. And that's income benefit. Income base. 254. So what happens in these, they say, we'll give you, in this case, well, I'll tell you exactly what they said. We'll guarantee that if you do 185, you got 254 future value, they're going to say, we'll give you a 4.5% each and every year increase on your benefit base. That's what's happening here, 4.5%. So by the time when you hit uh, 10 years or up, which would be 2022, you'll be able to take, you know, probably five and a half percent of that, which would be, you know, 254. So that's his income benefit. We're on it now, divided by 250. 
Yeah, but 5%. Again, that's not great, man. That's actually quite poor. So in this case, he made no money hardly. Now, he didn't lose anything. That's what I was telling him. I was telling Bob, I said, look, man, at the end of the day, you didn't lose money. And, you know, that was a that was a problem back in 2010, 11, 12. We just did not know. Uh, so hindsight against 2020, at least he didn't lose anything. <laughs> Bob was eating one of my potatoes I got <laughs> curing down here. <laughs> But uh, this, this is a bad contract. There's just no other way around that. He didn't make hardly any money. Uh, the income base is only grown by 4.5%. He's still in surrender charge, a 10-year surrender charge. And he has a death benefit of this 185. This is what ticks me off. This is called M and E expense. Mortality expense. I don't know why they got the and, the and in there. It's M and E is called mortality expense, and that's the death benefit. He is literally paying for a death benefit, probably of, uh, in this case, you know, I'll say 0.55. I don't know what it is. But it's, uh, I mean, let's say it's 0.55 on 100. That's, that's probably usually about 0.85. We're just going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say it's 0.55 here. So he's probably paying uh, about 1000 bucks a year for a death benefit. This mortality expense is a death benefit. He's probably paying $1,000 a year on that, if not more. I bet it's even more than that. But anyway, he's paying, he's paying money for death benefit. Yet if he dies today, <laughs> if he okay. dies today, what does his wife get? What does Jane receive? Does she receive the death benefit? No. She receives the cash value, the walkaway money. So he's paying for a death benefit that is non-existent. There's no benefit there at all. And yet he's been paying it for seven years now. Each and every year, a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a year for a death benefit that is not existing. In fact, actually, it's not. It's going to be. Yeah, so I, I, I can almost guarantee you it's more than a thousand dollars in the death benefit. He's paying for a death benefit on this amount that does not exist. There is no death benefit because if he died today, she would get not this amount of money. She would get that amount of money, the cash value. It's crazy, and yet she's he's paying for it even though there's nothing there. Nuts. It happens all the time. That's why these annuities are horrible because there's so much expense and the expenses don't ever go away. Now, what people say is, yeah, but Josh, if this thing drops at 175, you know, from 221 to 175, that'd be a pretty significant drop, especially for an account that only grew by 2.5%. Well, then she'd get the death benefit. Then she'd get 185,000 bucks. She wouldn't get 175. She'd get 185,000 bucks. Oh. Okay, so she has a, essentially, in that case, it's a $10,000 life insurance because she's getting $10,000 more from a life insurance contract from what the cash value is worth. Is it worth paying 1000 bucks a year, probably more, for 10000 bucks? No, stupid, don't do that. This is where these annuities just don't work because they're so doggone expensive. I know there's a lot going on here. I'd actually expect, if you have questions on this, to put them in the notes here, but th this is just the trouble with these annuities. The expenses are so through the roof. You got mortality expense, that's a death benefit. You got rider's expense. We're gonna give you a step up in income base. And again, they don't need the income, so they're paying for all these different bells and whistles they're probably never gonna need. And on top of that, all it does is go to a hurt their overall performance, as witnessed by 218,000 today would be worth 913,000 if he would have dumped it into the Wellington. 218,000 in the variable annuity because of all the fees is only worth 377,000 bucks today. That's it. There are better ways to do this. All right. Hope you like what you see here. Comment down below and we'll see you next time.